Hey, look, we got the band back together. How about that? Welcome, Jackie, Ruby, and Pat. What's my Ray McMasters? It's uh, what's what's the first song in the queue today? We got the. Uh... <laughs> it's been a long time uh, scheduling. It's like herding cats, you know. Can you do this time? No, I can't. Can you do? And we just tend to go back and forth. And today we we found a window, although it's narrow, uh, that we could make it because I know. Ruby's got to take off for an appointment. I got to head down to my son's place, and and Pat's got his afternoon nap. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, oh, it's not a nap. Let's not kid anybody. You start drinking at four thirty. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. So. That, that was just that was this weekend with uh, St. Patty's Day. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been. I I pulled up um, something I wanted to share with the group here because we there's a lot of. Uh, uh, well, let me show you. Um, this is seller percent of closings of seller paid concessions. And this is all areas here. It's 44%. But then I said, okay, well, what about the areas where there's a lot of new building going on? And what is their average percent of contributions like Buckeye? And lo and behold, 60%. Wow. And then if I go to... Um, another area, which would be Maricopa, that's 68%. And then I scroll on down and go to, oh, what's another good area here? I want Surprise. To see. Surprise, right there. And they are 46%. And all of them are an average of $10,000. And what made me look at that is one of the things that came about with this uh, utterly insane NAR settlement is, well, sellers will still be able to contribute to your closing costs. Well, newsflash, they're tapped out. I mean, they're already contributing at a 60% rate in some of these places. And so I don't know, um, you know, raising the flag and going, yeah, but you can still, you know, contribute to the buyer. Well, they already are. Uh, yeah. and, a, and at a large scale, you know, and a large dollar amount, and it's going towards uh, rate buy downs for the most part. Um, there's there's no room there to do commissions, although there are options for commissions, and it's going to be a really sticky summer because mostly the general public is not aware of what all the hand wringing that's going on and how to proceed. Or would you agree with that? Well, I think but the majority of the information they're seeing out there is all wrong. The whole oh, thing is wrong. Everything I'm seeing. So there's still there's still a period, I think it's still a period of everybody's trying to figure it out. You guys are kind of going through what we went through in Dodd Frank back in oh eight, oh nine when they cut our commission. I mean, basically they re restricted our commission to a set amount. So basically my commission is based on just a fixed amount of the loan amount. It's um it's a certain percentage, it, and typically it's built in with the with the rate. But I think you guys, there's going to be a lot of confusion the next six to eight nine months that uh, trying to people figure out. But I feel bad for, quite frankly, I'm just going to jump just jump it in. Get my two cents worth is there's going to be a lot of misinformation from. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of people saying, "Well, my my uncle says this." There's going to be misinformed buyers who don't know what's going on, who doesn't know what's going on. But they get advice from their uncle and their uncle Jim, who bought a house, and he heard, "Oh, you know, you don't have to pay commission." And there's going to be a lot of misinformation out there. Coming. Well, we're hearing that already now, Pat. Right. I hear, I hear you guys lowered your commissions. Well, my mom oh, and the, my mom in Colorado uh, called me up to ask me um, if they were doing away with realtors all the all together, and how's that going to work? Because they need us, and she's. She just can't even imagine it. She's very real estate savvy. Yeah, it just it just snowballed out of control. Um, and the I heard a great example um, talking about how, well, first of all, once these commissions are no longer posted on the multiple listing service, you can put it on your own website, but nobody's going to, you know, oh, I like this, I like that. And it was all meant um, to avoid steering. In other words, Jackie, you look at a house. I want you to go find a house for me. And you, you start looking at houses and you find one that's only off 1%. You're going to say, well, I'm not showing at the Rick. Um, they're not paying. That, but that, we never did that. 
But unfortunately, there were a lot of agents that did do that. Well, but here's the deal, though. Most of the steering was done by buyers. They, they've got so much access to information. They're telling us what they want to look at. Right. Irregardless of the buyer commission, because they didn't see it. Now, a couple of years ago, they came out and said, okay, we want buyers to see the buyer agent commission on public-facing websites. And that was of- one of the best things they ever did. I, I, I'm well, now they're believer. going to rank first. Right. And I'm a big believer on disclosure and transparency. I mean, Ruby and I always tell people we're the most transparent agents you could ever meet. I, I thought that was a great thing when they showed it on there. But there, we're going back into the 70s at this point. Yeah, here's how it's going to work. You, you've got a house listed at $500,000. I call you and I go, Jackie, are you offering agent compensation? And you go, well... If you're offering me four ninety, I'll give you a half a percent. If you're offering me five hundred, I'll go one. Anything above that, I'll go two. Now, how is that good for the for the buyer? Um, you know, so if you say, or you could tell your seller, I had seven buyers that wanted to look at your house. You know, reach it out to me, but you're not offering any compensation. So, um, you know, I have nothing to show them. I can't show them your house. Because I have a buyer broker agreement with them, and that's muddy and it's messy, and it's going to be a uh, going to be just. I think the summer that we're heading into is going to be called the summer of misinformation. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, that's likely. It's going to weed out some of those that don't have the um, experience to ask for what we want or ask what for what we deserve, actually. So it'll be, it'll be a learning curve for a lot of people and a lot of us uh, seasoned agents. Well, I think well, I think even, we can. I mean, go ahead, Jackie. I was just going to say, take it even off us. So for that first time home buyer out there and who's all getting all this misconception and hearing all this stuff on the news, which is so wrong. And I really want to do a video clarifying for the consumer exactly what's happening. But imagine that first time home buyer who wants to buy a house, they're thinking, okay, well, I'll just go directly to the listing agent because I don't have the money to pay a, a broker to represent me. And the first time home buyer who hasn't been through it before, they're the ones who have the least idea how much is is in a transaction and how complicated it can truly be. So you said it. They can't afford to pay. They can't you. afford to pay. And before they start looking for a buyer's agent, they're going to start looking online and thinking they can go directly to the seller. Well, then what's going to happen is dual agency. Now, are you going to have a good agent on that side who's going to say, yes, I'm going to explain dual agency and I'm going to explain how you are my customer, but not my client. And I need to treat you fairly, but I'm not looking out for you. I'm not going to. I mean, there's going to be so many lawsuits over this. And the thing is, is that if we have good listing agents that can negotiate the commissions that need to be there. And it's not like, I mean, nobody's going to work for free. Nobody can expect that, you know? I mean, it's just asinine to even Well, I think that of going back to sell and saying, saying, you know, you're not offering any compensation like we used to. And guess what? We haven't had any showings. Um, Absolutely. You may want to re you may want to reconsider that. It's not quite that evil. It's, you know, Real estate commissions are the lowest of most commissions that are out there. They're around 5%. You know, it, if you're selling your art, it's 10%. If you go to uh, Barrett Jackson, it's it's 10%. Um, and, you know, and on up. And we're five or lower. And so we're going to see a summer. Uh, you think you think 72 sold was out of control. Um, <laughs> you, you wait. I'm waiting for a new uh, commercial. And it's going to oh, be, yeah. going to be, um, I, I don't know. I, I just don't, I don't have any words for it. And patch shifting to rates. Um, you know, here we are in spring and in the beginning of the year, it was going to be four to six rate cuts, said the people that thought they knew. And that, boy, spring was going to be busy and it was going to be hot. And it's nothing like that. And now they're saying maybe three and you know, with a total of uh 0.75 reductions by by the end of the year and that and there's a big maybe on that yeah well i think uh, based on the the uh meeting wednesday we're 
they said, we're already on our third cut already, are we? Or no, no, there's no cuts yet, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you and I talked about this beginning here. I, I just didn't see, I, I got myself in the back. I said, uh, when well, they said coming out, you know, we said this a couple of times, but they said six rate cuts. You and I, I told you, I said, we'll be lucky if we, remember? I said, probably two. You yeah. know, I, I, I just didn't see the tea leaves. I mean, you know, I look at the data, look at psychology, look at the charts, look at the, you know, read different. Re- look at the recession that hasn't happened. Yeah, things are going strong there. I mean, right now you've got the problem is the Fed, the Federal Reserve. You know, we came down from nine down to about three, let's say 3.5, 3.6% inflation. The easy part's been gone. As I told, mentioned a couple of times the last couple of months that we're going to be in the tough period now. This is going to be the tough stretch of trying to get inflation down to two. And quite frankly, I mean, my thesis has been the last couple of years, you've heard me say this a couple, a year ago, a couple of years ago, that the 2% target is really just so antiquated, it's unbelievable. So they never, they keep talking about 2% from the number that was made up about 20 plus, 25 years ago. And they didn't obviously factor in wage, you know, wages have gone up dramatically back based on 20, 25 years ago. So they're not factoring that in. And I just don't, you know, you know we might see, you know, now they're saying expectations of 7%. Uh, or uh, in July, a cut in July. But you go back to that chart. I mean, we're stuck in this channel. I mean, you know, rates, uh, the, the MBS, the mortgage-backed security market, you know, you, you got the treasury, the, the 10-year treasury and the 30-year MBS, the mortgage-backed security market. This is really, this tracks this tracks mortgages better than obviously treasuries kind of go hand in hand. But we're stuck in this channel now. I mean, obviously we saw a spike back in October. Um, you know, I think we're just going to be stuck in this channel going out the next couple months. I mean, and the problem is now, I think, uh, I'm just kind of, uh, this is my theory, is that even though we do get a, let's say we do get a cut in July. Um, it's not going to move. It's being talked about so much in the markets now that um, the market will only react dramatically or hysterically when they don't know something, you know, they get surprised by something. But now we've been talking about it the last couple months, like, oh, yeah, it'll probably be a great cut in July. Two bits to a dollar that I don't see that really moving the mortgage back market that much. Because I think you've got, you got goods inflation, you got service relate, you know, service related inflation. And that's the problem is that, um, you know, the Fed, when they raise or lower rates, there's only certain things that are tied to the economy that are actually interest rate related, you know. I uh, heard, I can't remember who it was. Um, oh, there was a, a gentleman on a video from BlackRock saying, you know, Taylor Taylor Swift tickets are not, you know, determined by the Federal Reserve. How much the prices go up and down with Taylor Swift tickets? You know, those, those are not, that is not interest rate dr- driven. You know, machinery, credit cards, houses, you know, stuff that's tied to interest, you know, obviously, um, Segments that are tied to their finance are affected by it, but there's a lot of stuff that's not affected by interest rate movements, and the, the economy is still strong. So, I, I just my thing is, I think the Federal Reserve is going to sit pat for you know they might not even move in July. They'll be maybe one, one or two, who knows when. But I think it's already baked into the cake already. Oh, I think it is too. And uh, well, um, can I throw something in there, Rick? So here's yeah. one of the thing. Here's one of the things I think too, and just doing some research lately. And I know a lot of people say election years have nothing to do with it. But for some reason, I think it will this time. Because actually, when you look back, it is the spending that's going on right now is going. I I think we've been bordering a recession for the last two years, but they're purposely keeping us out of it. I think once we go through the election process, I think the Fed, right, I think the government's going to keep spending like crazy right now. And then they're going to pull back once we get through the election. And I think after we get through an election, I'm predicting we'll go into a recession then. Well, I just think from what I've researched there, about every other election year, between, there's a difference between spending and Fed monetary policy. And I don't believe that the Fed monetary policy has anything to do with who is president, who's not going to be president. I mean, Chairman Powell, he's, he's already worth $20 million. He doesn't need the job. So he doesn't care. I mean, he's just right. going to stick with what he's got now treasury spending yeah that's you know there there's always a boost but treasury spending you know you can decide that takes 18 months to get into the market so so any spending they do now if they wanted to vote on friday that we're gonna 
inject another one trillion, you won't feel it for a year to eighteen months out. That's not going to help anybody in a, an election if that's one of their goals. But I think um, we we are propped up. This is Rick the Economist guessing. We we you know we've never come out of a, a major <coughs> pandemic before, and we spent money we didn't need to, and it's still percolating out there. And then we just don't know how to land this ship. And so um, he did say back in January, and he's he's repeating it now. I can't do anything about house prices. And he can, he can raise rates like Volcker did and just put a bullet in housing. But the difference is now we've got so much debt that the more he raises the rates, the worse the situation gets. So he's, I think he's telling housing going, yeah, I can't build you a house. I can't, I can't move that lever. So I'm just not going to pay a whole lot of attention to that now. I've got there's, other things to worry about. There's so many people that still have that sounding in his head from when he said he's going to reset the housing market when he yeah. first started jacking rates up. And I have had, tried to explain. Well, he said so housing people. needs a reset. He Remember, he said housing needs a reset. I don't think he said he was going to reset it. Yeah. Well, then I heard it wrong like so many consumers because I've had so many people ask me about that. It. When are the prices going to come down? The Fed said the prices are going to come down. The, the Fed's going to lower rates. The Fed said the prices are going to come down. And I'm like, the Fed, exactly what you're saying. They don't control house prices. It's all controlled with supply and demand. Are they kind of controlling it? Yes, by keeping rates up and keeping the lock-in effect continuing. Well, the problem, yeah, so- the problem is with the, the problem is with the, uh, if they lower rates, it, it comes down to pure supply and demand. I mean, uh, we just do not have enough supply because even if they do lower rates, you know, for every seller, that seller is going to be a buyer of another house. So that that basically that that washes out that transaction from a new house coming on the market. You know, true, Joe Smith true. sells that house to buy another one. He doesn't sell that house and goes on a boat on the Caribbean for the rest of his life. He, he has to get somewhere. Right. So that bottom line is people are just walking away from the. They're just missing the whole picture. No, no. I mean, it just pure supply demand equation and uh, we just don't have enough supply based on the demographics of the people that are 28 29 to 35 36 years old that are trying to the house, household formation um and that we're gonna be stuck in this thing i think for several years until they lower you know they they loosen up regulations um you know housing i don't know how they could do it but this is a long-term thing that's oh, zoning regulations zoning yeah capital gains Capital gain, yeah. Yeah, capital gain, oh, capital gain. You now they could do something with the capital, some type of tax, you know, instead of something. Uh, but this is not, this is not just to reset it in a couple months where things are going to turn around. I mean, like I said, if rates go down, it's just going to, you know, we, I, we, we've all seen it the last year that if rates go down, you see people coming out of the woodwork to buy, which keeps up the price, props up the prices. So, I mean, that's why I just see, I see a lot of status quo here going through this year. Well, Ruby, um, Pat helped one of your first-time homebuyers get into a house with the new program. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Um, well, it's actually Jackie and I's client, but um, yeah, he he needed seller concessions, and Pat has a program that, um, depending on the zip code that you live currently in, it may or may not qualify you for a certain percentage or dollar amount up to ten thousand plus a thousand towards um, closing costs. What or what's that other thousand for? It's ten thousand for the uh, closing cost down or slash down payment, five hundred for appraisal, and five hundred for uh, home warranty. And basically, you have to live in a certain area, but you can buy anywhere. And there's uh-huh. what the great thing is with this program: there's no income limitations because typically a lot of these grants have you can only make up to say eighty thousand or seventy five thousand. This has no but it's with one specific lender. It's a Fannie Mae Home Ready program. There's varying lenders have varying amounts that they're giving. Like there's one lender that's giving five thousand, but I have this one specific lender that I'm using for you know our client. Um, yeah, that gives up the ten thousand. It's one specific lender that you have to you have to have a six eighty FICO or higher. You know they take people with pretty solid credit back. You know credit backgrounds. Um, if you're a little bit off, there's other lenders that are giving less amount, but yeah, there's one specific lender in it. I mean, basically it allowed, it allowed us to beat out what five or six other offers. I mean, yeah, because 
well, in the price point that he's at up to 400,000, maybe 405, right? Um, yeah. The nicer homes that are in that price point, we were up against three, four, five offers. So it was a, really a negotiating factor. Some of the sellers weren't willing to give any seller concessions. So that's where uh, this program came into play and really helped us secure um, this last contract for him. So he's really excited and and we're getting close to closing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a, you know, I use, I get pretty excited because I want to get the word out to people. I know I mentioned on our uh, channel last time, Rick, and, uh, but I, I don't usually get that excited with programs because usually there is like, you know, a higher rate or there's extra fees with these programs or down payment assist. This is basically a free down payment assistance program. It really is, That's you know, awesome. for, for 10 grand. Like you said, other lenders have five grand plus 500. So there's $6,000 with this other lender. It's kind of weird because not every lender is really in, I've seen some lenders offer only 2,500 or 3,000, but I'm like, this 10 grand is just a, if you got great credit, it's such a slam dunk. It's unbelievable. Well, it also helped compete against the new builds out there because the new builds are still giving that higher um, percentage towards closing costs or a dollar amount towards the buy down to the interest rate or the closing costs. And I did show him a few new builds, but then, you know, he was having to factor in redoing, you know, like doing the backyard. It's going to be dirt. He's got to come up with some sort of design. He's got to have money out of pocket for that. So it really was, um, like you said, a slam dog for him. It was, it's a perfect program for a lot of buyers out there. Yeah. 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 And then you know, our market, I'm trying to get the word out because like you said, I'm kind of, I'm repeating myself, but I talked to this one lender and he said that. He had 11 loans submitted to his company, his account, like in the last year or so. And four out of the 11, he went back to see if they would have qualified for this 10, you know, this credit. You know, the one this lender is offering 5,000, but he said, yeah, four out of 11 loans that were submitted to him, they didn't, they didn't use the program, which is kind of a free bully. Hey, Pat, how long will this last, you think? I don't know. They didn't give any specific uh, time frame. It's kind of weird. They usually say through April or May or June, or, I mean, it's, um, I'm going to try to dig in to see when the, if there is going to be a deadline, uh, but they, I haven't seen any specific deadline. There's 21 metropolitan areas w throughout the country uh, that, you know, certain, you know, people like it's DC and Virginia and California, some parts of Texas. And, but, you know, our MSA, the Phoenix Mesa Chandler area, and it all has to do with like overlying areas like Buckeye, Glendale, there's an address. There's basically a, a a site. You know, you can just fill in your address to see if you qualify for it or not. So, anyway, it's the site that you live in or the site you're going to buy. You live. Yeah. In. Well, you you basically live in. You just punch in your address to see. Oh, yep. Your 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 address that you currently live in qualify. You qualify living in this area qualifies for this program. I don't know what they're. I don't know what they're. Um, I don't know if they want to try to get people out of this area <laughs> to buy in the other areas, but I mean. Because it's it's outer lying areas like uh, like Casa Grande, uh, some parts of Florence. The map is real scattered. Some parts in North North Phoenix, Glendale, uh, Sun City, uh, Buckeye along the I ten. All these little different areas people you know qualify for. Some parts of Tempe. It's just really kind of a weird program, but it's it's unbelievable. I I when I don't see things, you know, I hate strings attached. And I hate. I'd like to be, I love to be transparent and tell people what they're getting. If they're getting a good deal, I'll tell them you're getting a good deal, but this is a great deal. I mean, I just, I haven't seen this one in quite, quite some time. Well, if you put in, you live next to Pat, they give you 20 grand. <laughs> we'll get you out of there. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So if anybody uh, emails you or me or whatever, I mean, I can send them the link and they're, you know, it's, it's, what's a home ready first program. Uh, well, send me the link. I'll put it in the it? description below. Yeah. Um, We'll put it in the description. So just click on that, and and you already know how to contact Pat too. And uh, so uh, I think you know I haven't been a big fan of um, down payment assistance when we had a real inventory shortage because you're you're just adding fuel to the fire. There's already housing shortage, and the problem with buyers has not been that they didn't have enough down payment money; it's that they didn't have enough homes to choose from but now we're at 16,900 homes that are 16,600 um it's not as dire as back when we had 4,000 homes so and the, that this one's targeted towards areas that have more inventory 
Um, it's not going to spike prices up or, or no. bidding wars. So, so I'm not that opposed to it. So, but, uh, well, folks, it was good to get you all back together again. And, uh, Jackie, you're going to be stepping out for a little bit and have a little, uh, they're attaching a new arm, right? So <laughs> basically they're going to rebuild it. Ouch. That just so, sounds cool. So they're going to take out all this old hardware, build a new socket, leave me be for four months. I'm, I'm so curious what it's going to be like to have no shoulder. And then, um, once the socket takes, they'll go back in and do a new reverse replacement. Oh, God. Can you sue the horse? I'm glad I'm a mortgage broker and not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds well. Our prayers are with you. You got, uh, I know you're going in on the 26th, and uh, so we'll uh, we'll catch you when we can. So, and I know your audience out there is going to go, heal, Jackie, heal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, well, everybody, good to see you. We will catch you on the flip side. All right. Thanks. Yeah.